This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 252, How to Really Take a Day Off, by Courtney Carver of BeMoreWithLess.com. Get ready to maximize your potential with Optimal Living Daily, the podcast that brings you the best in personal development and productivity every day of the week. Your optimal life awaits. Now here's your host, Justin Mollick. Hey, 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 welcome to Optimal Living Daily, the podcast where I read to you from the best blogs I can find, covering personal development, healthier living, minimalism, productivity, and more. And I'm your host and narrator of this show, Justin Mollick. We haven't heard from Courtney Carver in a while, so I'm just gonna jump right into her post and start optimizing your life. How to Really Take a Day Off by Courtney Carver of BeMoreWithLess.com. Somewhere in the past few decades, a day off became more about catching up, running errands, and planning for the next week than about actually enjoying the day. You'd probably do one or more of the following on your day off. Grocery shopping, banking, cleaning, meeting friends for brunch, laundry, wash car, go to the movies, entertain, catch up on work, catch up on TV, plan ahead. Some of those things are productive, fun, and even necessary, but when does your body, mind, and soul get to rest? The one time we actually take a day off is when we are sick. And why are we sick? Because we get run down, tired, and infected. Yuck. Allie Edwards mentioned that she was almost finished reading the book Sabbath and wish she could start it again. That one little sentence was a great review and I wanted to check it out. When I saw the tagline, finding rest, renewal, and delight in our busy lives, I knew Amazon had just made a sale. I'm not even close to finished and already want to reread it. This book speaks to me and inspired this post. Three reasons to really take a day off. You deserve it. You need it. You'll be better because of it. Wayne Muller, the author of Sabbath, points out that while Sabbath may be a holy day for some, it can be anything that provides a visceral experience of life, giving nourishment and rest. He suggests that Sabbath time can be a refuge from our modern life, which is designed to seduce our attention. Between hundreds of TV channels, calendar alerts, email, billboards, and other cries for our attention, it's no wonder that we often feel overwhelmed with day-to-day life and then some sense of guilt for wanting to retreat. Did you know that stores used to be closed on Sunday once upon a time? They still are in parts of Europe. I know this because on my last day in Copenhagen many years ago, I went back to the boutique that carried the boots that I didn't think I could leave the country without, and all I found was a locked door. It was Sunday. While I could have been experiencing life-giving nourishment and rest, I had my nose pressed to a closed store window, moaning, no, no, this can't be happening. Maybe they open at noon. Fast forward several years and several pairs of subpar boots, and what I want more than anything is a visceral experience of life giving nourishment and rest. If you want that too, then follow the simple instructions below and rest, renew, and delight. The 10-step plan to really take a day off. Number one, schedule your day off. Put it in your calendar and make it important. Number two, tell the world. Call your friends, text your colleagues, tweet the news that you have scheduled a day off and won't be available. Number three, take a Sabbath Eve. On the night before your planned day off, skip the heavy meal and alcohol. Plan to wake up feeling peaceful and refreshed. Number four, make a Sabbath box. This was a lovely suggestion from the book Sabbath. Put anything in the box that you don't want to use during your day off. I think cell phone and computer will top the list, but there may be other things. Also include things left undone and worries by writing them on a piece of paper and placing it in the box. Number five, time out. Whenever I go on vacation, the thing I love most is not being aware of what time it is and not caring. If you can afford this luxury, turn off your clocks and don't worry about what time it is. Eat when you're hungry, drink when you're thirsty, and sleep when you're tired. Number six, leave the shoulds in the Sabbath box. If you're really gonna take a day off, don't worry about what you should or should not be doing. If you wanna take three naps, take three naps. Lunch in bed, why not? Number seven, rest in your own way. Number eight, renew in your own way. Number nine, delight in your own way. And number 10, promise you won't spend the day after making up for your day off. If you can't decide how you wanna spend your day, I highly recommend this suggestion from Sabbath and plan to put it to the test myself. Slotha Yoga. Quote, when you wake up, don't get up, stay in bed. Give yourself time to review your dreams. Notice how it feels to be in your body this morning. Watch how the light is coming in your room today, read a little, daydream a little, wonder about breakfast, unquote. 
One couple mentioned in the book has a ritual of champagne and scrabble in bed on their Sabbath mornings. Quote, the fruitful uselessness of rest, play, and delight can begin on a Sabbath morning. Wake up, but do not get up. Do something delightful. Use your imagination, be frivolous, be daring, invent rituals. Do nothing of significance. Cultivate expertise in slotha yoga. Wayne Muller. You just listened to the post titled How to Really Take a Day Off by Courtney Carver of bemorewithless.com. This is something I definitely believe in. People who know me well know that I like my sabbaticals. I love my sabbaticals, actually. I work very hard when I'm in work mode, but then I like to take complete days off where I really do nothing, often many days in a row, and I find it's the best way to recover and it helps clear my mind. It's definitely counterintuitive since I sometimes read posts about productivity and stuff along those lines. And actually, completely coincidentally, I'm gonna be reading about productivity at tomorrow's show, So yeah, it might seem contradictory, but this totally made sense to me. Now, if you enjoy this podcast and want to help keep it going for more weeks or months or maybe even years, I put up a how to help page at oldpodcast.com. If you notice, there are no ads in this show. This show does lose money every month. So it'd be awesome if you could check it out and support the show in one way or another, financially or otherwise. There are lots of ideas there that you can check out. And the direct link there is oldpodcast.com slash support. Or again, just go to oldpodcast.com and find the how to help page. And happy Friday. Have a great start to your weekend. And I'll see you in tomorrow's show about productivity, where your optimal life awaits. Hey, this is Dan from the Optimal Finance Daily Podcast, which is a lot like this show, except more focused on personal finance. Justin handpicks the best posts he can find from blogs and authors like Ramit Sethi, Mr. Money Mustache, and more. And I read them to you five days a week. So if you enjoy this podcast, come on over and subscribe to Optimal Finance Daily too. And together, we'll optimize your financial life. You've been listening to Optimal Living Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us, and remember, your optimal life awaits.